Hi everyone. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is building uh, a few raised beds. Anybody who's been watching my garden come along has seen that we've been putting some raised beds uh, up in the backyard. So I'm going to do a little video of how I do it. Now, I am by any means no Norm Abrams, if you remember him from this old house. He has all the special tools and all the you know, measuring equipment to do like a really good job. But what I'm going to show you is how you can quickly and easily, without too many skills, get something up and it should be sufficient. So uh, uh, be watching here and uh, seeing uh, how I do uh, my race beds and maybe you can do some of the same things as well. Uh, let's show you what kind of what we'll need first of all though. All right, so here's some of the tools that I'm going to be using today. Um, I don't really need a lot, and I don't think you really do need a lot. One is a simple yardstick here just to do some measuring of placement where I'm putting my screws, a uh, little marker pen, and then my drill. Now, my drill that I have here is a DeWalt drill. Uh, it's a 12-volt uh, max, if you see that. I got some good reviews on Amazon, and because it's Christmas, they've been putting them on sale. So I basically needed a new drill, so I got myself a new drill, and then I got myself the drill bits that go with it for all different things, not just for the garden, but anything around the house. If you're a carpenter or somebody who does uh, a lot of this work professionally, I'm sure you might need a better drill setup than I do, but I think this is sufficient for the things that I know how to do. And of course, what you need is the wood. So what I have here is uh, wood. Uh, it's already kind of pre-cut. Um, basically, uh, these are 2 by 12 by 8. So they're 8 feet long and they're 12 inches high. So for the beds that I'm putting out right now, I figured I'd, I'd get a, a lot of depth. So for things like my tomatoes and cucumbers, um, I'll give them some depth, some, some good dirt to kind of dig in there. And also if I want to do some root vegetables too. Um, for some of the other things that I'm going to do, I probably won't use uh, always 12 inches high because uh, I don't think that you need it for a lot of the different plants that don't go real deep. But anyways, uh, if you go to Home Depot, basically you can ask them to cut it for you. So basically I have uh, the 8 foot long and then instead of the 4 foot wide, I ask them to do the 3 foot. Um, if you've got nice long arms, uh, yeah, you probably can have a four foot wide and then as you circle around your bed, you can get in there and weed and plant and do stuff like that. But I found for my purposes and my arm length and everything that the three foot wide uh, is probably sufficient. Uh, it'll, that'll just do us fine. Now, one of the things that I've also done here too, because you can kind of notice a green tinge to the wood. I have gotten treated wood. Now, I know there's a big controversy over do you use treated wood or not, but uh, from what I've read, they no longer use the harsh chemicals in the treated wood. I believe they're using copper or non-toxic um, chemicals uh, in the wood. I guess in the olden days, they used to use arsenic and other sort of poisonous solvents that treated the wood. Uh, so I'm going with the treated wood and I'm going to, you know, take my chances. Uh, you know, as old as I am getting now, you know, if it's going to kill me, well, that's okay. <laughs> but I did start off with a tr uh, untreated wood and you can tell very rapidly that that wood starts to, uh, you know, get weathered by the elements. And one of the things that I also did too was spray the water sealer from the can on it. And that seems to do a pretty good job too now whether that has the harsh chemicals that would leach into the dirt and, and poison us all. I don't think so either. It's not that much. But I'm going with these treated ones because from what I read, it's not poisonous anymore. Um, so anyways, here's the equipment that I have and the wood. And now we'll assemble the beds. All right, so a little of what I'm doing here. Um, I basically got the wood laid out, um, just four pieces of wood two long lengths followed by the two short lengths like I say these are eight feet long 12 inches high and I've cut these to three foot pieces because I do basically an eight by three uh, I know some people do the four foot but if you have shorter arms you might need to do three foot like me all right so again nothing fancy here so basically what I want to do is get a idea of where to put the screws so of course on each of the four corners 
I'll need to uh, place the screws. So what I basically do is use this yardstick here, and I basically say, okay, about a width, the yardstick width, or it's about uh, almost an inch and a half. So I give myself, not too close to the edge, not too far in, about a yardstick's width. And then, you know, the funny thing about this wood, it's, uh, it's a, what they call a two by 12 by eight. Well, look at if you measure this. The, that's not 12 inches, it's 11. So I don't know what the standards are, but it's not really 12 inches high, even though that's what they call it. So when I'm measuring this, basically I kind of do it real simple. Like I basically say, okay, um, in that width of the yardstick, basically right in the middle, I'm gonna put a series of holes here. And so if you'll notice, I kind of, since this is 11 inches, I kind of put one right in the middle, five and a half, and then I'll put two more on the top and two more dots there at the bottom. You can see where I've marked that. And so what I'm gonna do is instead of screwing the screw right into this, I'm gonna drill the pilot holes because you don't wanna crack the wood. So I'm gonna do this on all four corners here and then basically drill the holes in and uh, then we'll be ready. But like I said, you want to drill little pilot holes, not just put the screw right in, because you could split the wood. Now, let me just make a comment about the wood. I mean, you know, granted, it's just plain old wood, Home Depot, but I mean, look at how it's kind of, you know, kind of cracking in different areas, and the quality of the wood with the, with the knots, and you can see where, I don't know if you can see this, but it's this one board, for whatever reason, is kind of warping a little bit. It's not even laying flat. So when you're putting these together, you know, the exact measurements, because of the way they're milled and cut and everything, I mean, it's, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly squared line up. I mean, again, if you're a Norm Abrams, this old house, you got the T-square and you're going to make it absolutely perfect with the right tool. But I just need something to hold dirt. And with the specs of this wood, it doesn't really allow you to, you know, line everything up perfectly like, you know, like you're building a, a watertight seal on any of this. So it's just kind of curious that when you're at Home Depot and, I'm, you know, and you're looking for wood, um, you know, the quality of the wood is, is what it is. You just get different cuts. And one of the things that I had to do is um, kind of look through because there's, you know, again, different dents and cuts and grooves and whatever when you're buying the wood. So when you're at Home Depot, you know, and if you're watching me, I'm kind of like digging through these heavy piles of wood, trying to find the perfect pieces or at least a piece that's acceptable with no knots and it, you know, looks like it's going to hold up for a while. So you may have different challenges at your Home Depot Lowe's or wherever you buy wood that the, the quality may uh, differ. But again, you know, this if you get five years, let's say, out of the bet, you probably, you know, consider yourself lucky. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to drill these holes now, and then we'll take the next steps. All right, so here we are with my drill. Basically, this is my new drill and my new drill bits, uh, my DeWalt from Amazon. Um, for these pilot holes, I'm going to use the 1-8 drill bit here. So I got my drill, got my 1-8, and then I'm just gonna drill it in here. So the torque, you know, I'm sure there's a proper torque setting, but I'll do 11. I probably don't need too much there, I guess. And then make sure your direction is the right way. And again, let's see if I can drill a couple examples by holding the camera at the same time. So I'm just gonna drill it. You probably don't have to go all the way through, but you know, just go deep enough. So here we go. There we go, just like that. There's one. There's two. probably get away with three, four, but however I spend space on these 12 inches I've been using 
five screws. It's probably overkill, but ain't anything going to uh, take it apart for sure. All right, so I'm gonna do these on the other four sides, just like that. Okay, now my holes are drilled, and now I'm gonna get ready to um, put in the screws in and put it together. So here's one of the things that I'm doing. So first, with my DeWalt drill, I have a little quick, uh, quick magnetic bit there, and the screws that I use take the uh, the little star bit. So here's the screws that I use. End up using these Spax uh, multi-purpose exterior deck screws. They're a 10x 3 inch. Now, of course, um, probably anywhere between two to three inches is sufficient. Um, but I found these work really well. So um, basically, I got the drill and I got the little bit that fits. You can notice that it's that little star uh, bit. So right there, it'll fit right in. So I'll put them together. So I'm going to turn these on its side and then I'll start to put them in to get it together here and then drill it up. Okay. All right. So I'm kind of doing this by myself and recording at the same time. So it's a little bit trickier, but I'm basically putting them in the rectangle shape. And I'll start with probably two um, two screws in each just to line it up and just to stabilize it. And then I'll start drilling them in and then going around and securing them down. But it can be a bit of a challenge because what you really want to do is line it up. And again, how these things are warped and all that other stuff, you know, you really kind of got to line them up here and then get your drill and drill it together. Does it have to be perfect? No. Does it have to look like something on this old house? No. It just has to be good enough to hold dirt and last a couple years. So I'm going to go ahead to drill some uh, uh, screws in here to get it stabilized and then we'll come back. Okay. So now I basically have it uh, a bit stable here as you can see. Um, I basically put in top screw for each one just to get it stabilized and I haven't put in this one in the corner yet but put in the top screw just to get it stabilized and just to get it lined up then start screwing the rest together and you should have uh, some more stability here and it should look good so I'm going to do that with the rest of the screws to get it more secure and then we'll come back. One thing that you might want to be aware of too, uh, when you buy these screws, they also come with the drill bit. And it just so happens that the drill bit that the screws come with uh, also fit my drill like their standard size. So you don't necessarily have to go buy drill bits or fight or scrounge around to find something that fits your screws. It comes with it. So that's kind of handy too and I'm going to use that here. Uh, next for the rest of them. All right, so I'm going to screw some more in and then we'll come back. All right, as you can see, we have everything screwed together. And you can see that each one of these has four screws on the side. If you want, you could get them even tighter and countersink them, but basically, in drilling it in, uh, that is secure that is not going anywhere and again you know it's just it doesn't have to be perfectly square when you set it up on the ground you're going to have to adjust the the balance and everything so the next thing is while you can have one person help you build your race bed it's another to actually get it to where it's going to go in the backyard so this is where i need to phone a friend basically and help uh carry it in the back now why did i do it here and not in the backyard to begin with well because this has at least cement and you have somewhat of a stable level surface where if you're doing it in the backyard you are on grass and mud and stuff like that so it's a little better work area here so anyways um, we will uh, move it to the backyard and we'll show you where that goes next okay so this is the part where we're going to lay the bed down now as you can see here these were the first two beds that we put uh, a couple weeks ago. They're all set and dandy. Now, what you have to do is find a place where, we're, where you're going to put your raised bed. Now, if you see any of my other videos, this is where I had a lot of containers 
and so I already had a garden here in this space. But now that I'm putting raised beds, I need to clear out the area. So what I kind of did here, and it looks like a mess, of course, but basically as I was emptying out the containers from last year, I kind of left the dirt piled up here. Why? Because I'm going to use it as a base and a foundation for the new raised beds. Um, basically all this old plant matter and leaves, that'll make a great foundation and, you know, we'll start the uh, microbial activities and, and all the composting underneath the bed. But something I wanted to do first here is, you know, I don't want any weeds or anything to grow from the bottom. And since this has already been an area with mulch and whatnot, it's pretty much hard dirt and probably not a chance of weeds to grow up from the bottom. But just in case, and as a preventative, you notice that around the border here, and if you saw the other videos, I put cardboard down. And that's what I'll do. So if you're like me, you get a lot of Amazon Prime packages. Instead of throwing out the cardboard, save it. Because you can use it as your foundation to either smother grass or the weeds or wherever you might be putting your raised beds. And for me, I'm going to do it just as insurance. I'm going to put some cardboard down and kind of make a nice foundation here. So let me go get the cardboard and we'll lay it out. Okay, so I've laid some cardboard down and I kind of know where I want to position it. Now the whole thing is making sure you got enough room to walk and and do things, right? So of course, you know, you got the air conditioner unit there and here's the other beds here and you want to be able to have some space between them. Right now I got these uh, trellises that I might just move and reposition closer here, but you want enough room so that you could walk uh, between your raised beds and, and get around and also I want to make sure that you know these are a bit higher so if I put them down they'll be too low here so I want to put that dirt now over so I have a, a higher plateau to, to set that on so anyways that's kind of getting set up so now let me uh, get that ready and I'll drop the raised bed in there and we'll see how that looks okay I've uh, put the bed down and of course where I'm placing this now I have to have a couple considerations and these are some of the things you might have to think about too so the first one is well I got that air conditioning unit so I really have to make sure that air conditioning unit has enough airflow and you know I'm not impeding that function so rather than line these up you know in parallel I'm pushing this one back a little bit so that way if the air conditioning man has to come through or anything like that, we are going to be out of the way. Now the other thing here too is how do I get around the bed? So here I'm looking that there's at least, oh, at least two, probably not three feet, but two to three feet of walking space between the beds. So as again, I'll, I'll move these trellises probably closer to the bed or maybe right even inside the bed I could do it that way. But uh, as you come through, you have easy access now see I can reach almost all the way to the other side and you can reach around here you can reach and plant you can plant uh, and then of course these trellises are in the way here now uh, I can come on this side and reach around too now the other thing you might have to think about too is how close do you put this to your house well here's the roof line here and so the thing that you have to remember is when it rains and it rains hard that rain's going to come straight down. You would not want your beds right underneath that because it will do nothing but flood that, probably, you know, just create big uh, craters in the, in the bed and stuff like that. So it looks like I got enough room so that when it rains hard and that rain comes down off the roof, it's going to come straight down into the mulch or open area. Now, I had uh, my containers here last year, and of course, uh, I had to make sure that they weren't underneath that as well. Now, in doing the raised beds, what am I gaining here? Well, I'm gaining uh, uh, ease of, of maintenance. You know, I had container after container here, and each container had to have a water line to it and such. Now, with the raised bed, it's going to be a much easier to take care of because I can plant directly in here, water it, and it will be fine. And then my hoops I can put over here to either shade the sun, whatever. Um, so... I think uh, these are a good positioning here for the raised beds and um, 
now I just have to put together the second one and put that over here in front of it. So that's going to stick out a little bit, but that's okay. As my garden encroaches, I'm kind of eating a little chunk here, and that'd be okay too. Now, the other thing you want to make sure of is I've laid the cardboard down, and you can wet the cardboard too. If you're putting this over grass, you might want to wet it, start that action already for decomposing and smothering your grass, but I don't have to worry about that here. But you may want to worry about the leveling. So, you know, again, it's not going to be perfect, but this is going to be about as close as I can get. So when I look at the bubble there, that's dead on, so I'll take it. <laughs> and then when I come to this side here, um, it's almost centered. It's about as close as you're going to get. And like I say, as things settle, they're going to wobble around anyways. That's just the nature of the beast. And the other thing I wanted to make sure of too was, are they about at the same height as the ones over here? And I think they are because I don't really want any areas that if it does rain, I want to make sure there's drainage and there's not pooling water anywhere. And I think we're probably okay here. Once I fill these beds with dirt um, and all this mulch around here, I'm going to get the uh, little bit nicer mulch, this pine bark mulch. It's really cheap around here. They have deals a lot of times where you can get like 10 bags for 10 bucks or 20 bucks or something. It just depends on the sale. So what I'll do is as soon as I get these set up filled with dirt, then I'll finish it off with some nice mulch. And that way it looks a little nicer and it'll look a little neater. Once these are in place, then it's the rat nest of the previous um, watering uh, hoses. I'll probably have to uh, cut new lines and uh, you know have some different watering things, but that is for another time. Uh, but that's why we're doing all of this stuff now here in December. You know, it's kind of interesting. I, I like watching other gardeners and everything too. And you know, when you watch them, they you know it's almost like watching uh, you know the TV there, the production values are very nice. It's like the old Victory Garden on PBS. These people really know how to put together some videos. Uh, and the thing that they always cut out though is the um, <laughs> labor of getting their hands dirty. A lot of times you see them when they uh, put everything together and it's like, wow, that looked easy. But what you didn't see is, you know, them digging around in the dirt and mudding themselves up like I tend to do. Like I get all dirty stuff, you know, as, as you crawl around the mud. You know, I think when I do my videos, instead of cutting all those bits out, uh, I'll probably have somebody just, you know, show that, you know, you get your hands dirty here. This is tough moving the dirt and digging the dirt and wheelbarrowing the dirt. You know, <laughs> they never show you all that. So I'll, I'll try to be a little bit more <laughs> real in mind, uh, show you the, the actual struggles of this stuff because it's not always easy. Anyways, uh, it's getting cooler and we might get some rain here. You can kind of see the weather's changing of you know, what would you expect in December, but I need to get that other bed down here and done so I can call this part of the project over. So let me get that done and then we'll come back.